Hey, welcome back to Introduction to Ionic. My name is Dan, and in today's video, we're going to talk about collecting data from a user using a form. So I have my application running in the browser right now, and um, what I want to do is allow the user to create a brand new task for their to-do list. So we have this new task button, or two different new task buttons, and when I click them, we navigate to the new task page, uh, but the page is, is blank. There's um, All there is there is the priority that we selected. And so here we want to uh, add a form that allows the user to enter information about a new task, I press save, and then we, can, we should be able to take that data and put it in a database or uh, send it to an API or something like that. So uh, that's the task for today, and uh, let's jump right in. So, I am going to head to my new task component and open up the template file. And we're going to start by just getting the uh, form to render on the screen. And then we'll take care of the code behind the component. And then lastly, we'll wire the two things together. Um, so start off uh, with uh, adding the form to the template. And right inside this ion content component, I'm going to add just a standard HTML form element. And then inside that form element, I'm going to put a list. And I'm going to add a list because traditionally, uh, form controls in a mobile application are displayed in a list view. You can see this if you uh, go to your mobile phone and you try to um, like create a new uh, calendar invite, for example. All of those elements will be listed down the screen from top to bottom. So we're gonna use an ion list. And if you need a refresher on how lists work in Ionic, you can check out the earlier video in this course. Um, and then inside that list, I'm gonna have my first control. So I'm gonna do an ion item inside the list. And the, the first control I want for now is just going to be um, the title of the task. So the user will enter the, the label that, that, will, that the task uh, is going to be. So for example, if they wanted to make a task that was you know, uh, feeding the spiders, they would, it would be a text box here, and they want to type in feed the spiders. So um, to add a control, we're going to add two components to this item. The first one is an ion label, which will label our control. And uh, that I'm going to have be title. We'll call it task title. And the second element. Uh, that I'm going to add to my uh, ion item here is the text box itself. And that component will be an ion input. And Ionic is going to render that as a text box. And we'll talk in a second about all the attributes that we'll need on there to wire it up uh, to the backend component. Let's go ahead and save this and uh, see how it looks. Well, actually, before we do that, we have one more one more thing we're going to want in our form, and that's a submit button. So I'm going to add that after our list of controls so that it shows up at the bottom of the list after all of the, the inputs. I'm going to just use a, a regular ion button, and I'm going to give it the type equals submit so that it, uh, it knows to trigger the form submit action. And then um, the last thing I want to give it here is the expand property, and I'm going to set that to block. And what that's going to do is it will render the button the full width of the screen. Um, so it's not, uh, normally the button will be left aligned. Um, but if we give it expand block, it'll, it'll kind of stretch out so that it looks like a regular submit button. And the text for that button will just be uh, add task. There we go. So let's save that and uh, see how it looks. So it gave me the task title. And then right here is a text box that I can type into. So I can say, uh, feed the spiders. And then I have a add task uh, form submit button. And none of these do anything right now. Um, so the next thing we have to do is go wire up our form to the back end. So we're going to head over to the new task page.ts. And um, so what we're going to want to do here is put in a new uh, field on our class that will represent the form data. Uh, and this will keep track of all the data on the form as the users enter information into their form. This um, element, this um, 
this uh, field that we're about to make on our class will track that data. And that's going to be a, we're going to name it, um, we'll just name it form data. And we're going to use uh, Angular's form group class. So the type, the data type of this property is form group. And before I do anything, I see um, uh, Visual Studio Code is uh, offering to autocomplete this for me. And if I hit enter here, it will automatically import the form group from the Angular Forms library, which is where we want to get this from. So this is going to track our data. Um, and so we need to initialize this. So right here in our on init function, um, once the form is initialized, uh, we're going to go ahead and create, well, we'll initialize this uh, form data property. So we'll say form this.form data equals, and we're going to set it to a new instance of the form group. And this, uh, the constructor for this form group takes in a single parameter, and it's an object. And that object uh, will, every property of this object will represent a different form control on our screen. So for now, all we have is this title. So I'm going to go, I'm going to add a title to this object. And I'm going to set this equal to a new form control which is another class in the Angular Forms library. So once again, I'm gonna just hit enter here and let Visual Studio Code auto import that for me. So we see that up here. So now that we have our data structure that tracks the form data, the next thing we need to add is a, um, a handler for when the form gets submitted, what action are we gonna take? So I'm gonna call that function on submit and um, normally what I would do here, if um, we had a real data source, I would save this new task to the database or I would hit an API call or something like that. Um, for now, we just wanna make sure that we have access to the data from the form. And then at, at later on, whenever you want, you can use that data to do something with it. But for now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna verify that we have access to that data. So I'm gonna log it to the console. So we're just gonna do a console.log and then to get the form data, we simply say this.formData.value. And that value property will should be an object, and each object in that, each property in that object will be the value of a different field in our form. Uh, so then uh, we're about ready to wire this uh, guy up to our uh, our form. So I'm going to head to the new task page template. And so we have all the data in the, the data and the handlers in the component and uh, the code of the component. We now need to wire that to the elements that we created in our template. So for our form, we're going to bind the form group property to our form data property of the component that we just created. So now we want to bind the form submit handler to our on submit function. Um, so we'll use the ng submit function binding and uh, bind it to our on submit function so that when the form is submitted, it will call our on submit function. Uh, and then lastly, um, we have the whole form bound to this form group data structure, but we need to bind this specific input to the title property of our form group. So I'm gonna add the form control name property and set it equal to title. Now I'm gonna save this and we're gonna see an error in our application um, and I think it's just a good time to take a look at that error and learn how to resolve it because it's one that we should probably be familiar with. All right, if we look at our console, this is the error we get and it's no provider found. Now you'll see uh, no provider found for different things. In this case, the provider it's looking for is an ng control provider, but it could be no provider for whatever missing provider there is. 
Um, and what this generally will mean is that we have used some library or some service in our component and we didn't tell that component uh, the module of that component to import that service or that dependency. So uh, what we can do to resolve this is go to our new task module.ts and we'll see here by default when we generated this module using the generator tool, um, Ionic or Angular added these imports by default and it added the forms module by default. But there, uh, on top of that, there are, there are two ways to uh, develop forms in Angular. Um, there's like a template method, and then there's what's called a reactive forms method. And um, we have to, we're using the reactive forms method um, in this course. Uh, if you want to get familiar with the other uh, method of developing forms, you can check that out on Angular's documentation. But for now, we are using the reactive uh, forms method. And so we need to import that module as well. So I'm going to add to my imports array the reactive forms module. And once again, I'll hit enter here and let VS Code auto import this from the Angular forms library. And this will tell our component that this new provider is now available to us so we can, we can do this control, bind, control data, control group binding. All right, so now we can go ahead and uh, put in our new task title. We'll say uh, feed the kangaroos and press add task. And we'll see in, we see in our console, uh, the form data object was logged. It has a single property, which is title, and it's the title that we entered here. So that's a real quick intro to forms in Ionic. Uh, in future videos, we'll talk about adding different types of controls and validation. Uh, but for now, that's all we have for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.